100 to nothing to have sanctions on Iran, including Rand Paul likely and everyone who's a seemingly libertarian person in the U.S. Senate. Was that correct or is it incorrect? No, without speaking directly to that legislation, because I'm not familiar with it, let me just share my experience as governor of New Mexico when it came to vetoes. Um, I vetoed 750 bills. Only two of them were overturned. On, uh, now, the 750 bills that I vetoed, very official. I vetoed 750 bills. Unofficially, 100 of those bills that I vetoed were uh, of legislation where the vote in the legislature in New Mexico was 117 to 0, and I vetoed the legislation 100 times. That's unofficial. I don't have an aversion to standing up and saying no when everybody else is saying okay. yes. My question though is, did they vote correctly though, or should we not, should we, should we not have the sanctions on Iran? It's mostly the question, more so than the ability to veto it. Well, I'm, all, I'm, always, I'm always the guy right from the get-go that First of all, sanctioning Iran is, is a sanction against the people of Iran. Mm -hmm. And, and this, this, this is just the fundamentally what I'm, what I'm thinking right off the top of my head is, is that you don't win the hearts and minds of the, the people in Iraq by sanctioning them. Uh, you win the hearts and minds of people in I Iran by sanctioning their government somehow, but not their people, and that uh, trade sanctions people. Uh, and so I can't say that I wouldn't have voted in that 100, but I'm really not familiar with the, with, with the exact issues that surrounded it, and, and I would have been if I would have been in, in Congress. Um, two things, if you don't mind. Um, one of your competitors has come out and said that uh, he plans to cut his uh, presidential salary to the median average income. Um, I'd like to know what are your thoughts on, you said you want to cut... 43% uh, across the board, would that also include your own salary as well? No, it wouldn't include my salary, but it would include the uh, executive uh, budget, yes. The, the executive budget would get cut by 43%. And this was Rick Perry talking about having, have, having the salary of all legislators and the president. And then right along with that saying that it's a, that it's a, a group that's made up of rich individuals. Well, cutting the salary in half is going to assure that all we're going to have are people that are well healed that are going to be able to hold these offices. So it, it, it's really the opposite uh, direction. I mean, I like the argument that how about paying Congress people a million dollars a year and bar them from any association with government after they leave office? And that we would end up benefiting. I think significantly by that. I mean, Newt Gingrich gets out of office and what, $36 million that his firm has, has uh, taken in over the last four years? That's the problem. Nobody can seem to disassociate themselves from government. And the eight years since I've left, or ten years now since I've left service as governor of New Mexico, I, I have had no contact at all with government. I really believe in citizen service and get in and get out and make your contribution and maybe if it paid more, uh, maybe if it paid commensurate with the private sector that we would have individuals that weren't really well off that might really want that kind of a salary and get in and do all the right things and if they were barred from any association with government after their service, wow, maybe that's the answer. Um, and second, um, there a lot of executive orders, especially many of them that came from George W. Bush and such, um, very tyrannical, uh, and they usually get sunsetted throughout each uh, you know, presidential term. Um, would, would you uh, take a, like a you know, fine comb to a lot of these executive orders, which to me are, are dictator, you know, more, more of a, the form of a dictator versus what we're supposed to have as a government. Would you take a fine tooth comb to a lot of these executive orders? maybe veto or get rid of a lot of them? Well, by, by executive order, um, uh, I, in, in, the, in the whole notion of less government, the whole notion of get government out of our personal lives, reduce the size of government, I don't want to say that I'm not going to implement as many executive orders or more of those executive orders than anybody else to accomplish what I just said. And, and believe
believing that executive orders are subject to constitutional challenge always, and they were when I was governor of New Mexico, and um, a lot of it doesn't sound constitutional, but the, this is what get, this is the three branches of government, and all three branches are continually pushing the envelopes on on their power, and it's all to accomplish what it is they want done. If I were elected president of the United States, it would be somebody shouting, "Smaller government, get government out of our personal lives." I'm, I'm going to try everything I can to make that happen. One more question. that education would improve dramatically nationwide by making it a 50-state competition to get to the top as opposed to uh, one-size-fits-all, Washington has the answers. Um, I, I just don't accept that. original mandate of price stability, which I think is, is in direct uh, opposition to adding full employment to that, which is what we have now, that we, would, that we would have competitive interest rates. Of course, if we had competitive interest rates right now, we would find ourselves in the monetary collapse because interest on the debt now would be the second or third biggest uh, ticket in the, in the budget uh, in and of itself. So. If we abol and by the way, abolishing the Federal Reserve would not be the end all to all of our problems because the Treasury would and would still be printing money as do other countries and did we prior to having a central bank. And the central bank does uh, provide uh, services that could more than be duplicated with regional banking, but I just want to say that ending the Federal Reserve is not the end.